played at rackets at school, she yep. can really ping the ball around from, from nowhere. Yeah, she's the ladies British Open rackets champion as well, so she's continued that, playing a lot of rackets at Queen's, and you can always tell a rackets player on a tennis court, can't you? They're yes. not phased by the corners, and there's this sort of... Oh. Thing there. There's an unusual shot, which I've Super seen. Had it heading in the right direction. Good choice. There's such a disadvantage being a left-hander volleying return as well. You just can't get the same goal as a right-hander. So why are there so many good left-handed players in that screen? Um. Right, at several points that he was studying the ball by orbiting it and scoring yes. and he had so much time. And Claire has a, a touch of that as well against these other players. And still... So and they might be returning the serve, but they're hidden underneath the grill, so they're on their forehand. But again, you don't see that at this level. No, you don't do that. If, yeah, no. But if you know, if I was coaching, then that's the thing I'd be saying. When you first return, then yeah. swap over. But it, it can be as confusing for you as the other end at the start. So that's just something you're used to doing. Well, that's true. And you also need players. Yeah, a lot of us do that. Yeah. 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 That was my left. Yes, that's there. Yeah. One of the temptations of the net to yeah. stick their racket out there. A lawn tennis player or a squash player? What do you think of that? Yeah. She was boasting well earlier. So Tara's played a lot of tennis in the last couple of years when she's joined Queens and her ability of reading both has, I know, been greatly improved in yeah. today's match. Uh, she's been completely surrounded. Yeah. The most wood after wood after wood. <laughs> and I think we get up to six or seven shots in a row that are off the wood. Yeah. I mean, that's a skill that players of this calibre haven't developed, unlike some of us who play off higher <laughs> handicaps. Uh, have you done a boomerang We play, played in 2020. We've got the Oxford unicorns now. Right. You get some courts where when you miss the, the dead on, the ball comes down parallel with the back wall a hell of a lot. But this particular court, it seems to have a second bounce on the penthouse and doesn't come down parallel. Yeah. And I think it's because the penthouse is actually quite a wide, wide penthouse. It's and quite bouncy as well. The dead on there. First one, surprisingly. Given all the forcing we've seen, but the players are good enough to that try and defend. Good defending. Yeah. <laughs> or at least attempted defending. Yeah. And there's that bounce off the timbre that comes yeah, off that very side high. wall. Yeah. Well done, Sass. A couple of good defences there. Another one. Might have left oh, that for a switch. hazard. I would have left it for a hazard if I was them. We'll see if that might cost them the serve. Ooh, Sasson's framed another one. It's a great rally. This might be the longest great, rally of the map. No, and they win it. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh. It's funny, that started with Georgie and, and Nicola took over halfway yeah, through. And they did brilliantly been. there. No, well, I was the chairman of the Tennis Association equipment committee in 1988. Oh, last time this happened. That's the, hang on, I'm just going to interrupt you to say that's game and set. Go for the whack for the dead on here. It's the receivers who are 40-30 up here. Yep, let's go. Come on. Hit Sass it nice and hard. Sass crossing across the defender galleries. Cross court. Into the grail. And maybe we can who are at the minute accelerating towards tomorrow's final. Georgie and Nicola, I think, are, are doing exactly what you warned about at the beginning, which is get, getting drawn into, out of a need to get the points, hitting the ball harder and harder. Yes, and just losing control. Though. Rather than trying to do something different. See, there's a classic. Yeah, that's a really good example. Yeah, well, a couple of inches above the net, as opposed to giving it two foot clearance. And Rob, again, was so good at it. You know, he'd hit a great shot into a corner, and Rob would get it back. It wouldn't be anything special, but it's still in the rally. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you get some of the other players, they'll try to skim a hard shot at, you know, an inch above the net. And next for the first time, so we've yeah, had an still awful nice couple of weeks of non-stop rain, but it actually felt for the first time sitting out there this afternoon that there's some warmth in the air and spring is coming. And it's good. You hear the um, you hear the rain on this court as well, on the roof. You do. It's so a bit like Melbourne. Like yeah. uh, Melbourne and this court are very similar for the noise. This court's actually quite echoey and very hard to hear the marker. Um, yeah. I know that Rob would be to win the other half. Tower is in the car. Yes, 
it's unusual to have that, but that's the first time I think that's been done. They've yeah, and an enormous mixed... entry for it as well. Yeah. It's been great. Enjoyed my match against Tara and Penny, playing with Georgie, actually. Like you said, picking your right partner. Yeah. Back on court, as Nico and Georgie, as so often, have taken a lead in this game. It's 30-15 as Georgie goes for a winner across court, and it's up on the penthouse. serve up so they play again Lynn's learned to just get that back in play she didn't try to do too much with it let's get it back into play so Georgie should go for Hazard Gallery here now. again well great points about that ends the match great rest uh, Leia van der Zwellem and Saskia Bolleman win through to tomorrow's final. 6-2, 6-1, beating Nicola Dobel and Georgie Willis in a hard fought but ultimately um, reasonably easy passage for the number two seeds who